Mike Baker is here. He's the host of the President Daily Brief podcast, former CIA officer. Mike, how you doing, brother? I'm doing good, man. Thanks very much. Appreciate it. I'm grateful you're here. So I want to ask you the opening question that we open our segment with. Is this an invasion? So putting your, your former CIA member hat on, how do you define that? And is that what this is? Or what other word would you use to define it? Yeah, it's, I suppose an invasion would imply what we're looking at with Putin, right, In, into Ukraine. That's what most people think of when they think of invasion. It is a concerted strategic military um, operation, right? Now, if you substitute uh, the cartels for Putin's military, then yes, because what's happened is they've taken advantage of a self-inflicted wound by the Biden administration to leave essentially open borders, uh, despite what the montage said. And the cartels have taken that opportunity and are now essentially leading the invasion because they're controlling the border. They're controlling the border, certainly on the Mexican side. Um, they're controlling the flow of all those humans pouring across the border on a daily basis. And so, yes, I think invasion, um, you know, it can take many shapes and forms, and I think this certainly fits the bill. What are these cartels doing at the border? What are they bringing across? Well, uh, narcotics and humans, uh, you know, not to oversimplify the matter, but essentially that's it. And then uh, it's, look, if you were, if, if the cartel operations, and there's a number of cartels, obviously, right? And uh, there's a, a lot of infighting that goes on to control portions of the border because essentially if you're a corporation as a cartel you are currently uh just knocking it out of the park in terms of your uh your quarterly returns and your revenue streams and and what you can return to the shareholders uh they're making unprecedented amounts of money uh along the border and essentially that is coming from human trafficking and uh an increased flow of narcotics but El Chapo's family said they're done. They're out of the fentanyl business. <laughs> What's the yeah. problem? What are you worried about? <laughs> That's right. Yeah, look at that. El Chapo's uh, family's seen the light. They're they're wiping their hands clean of fentanyl. Well, look, there's there's two parts to that, right? First of all, they're making money off of fentanyl. Second of all, there is I I, I suspect look, these these are business operations, and they've been in operation for a long time. So they understand the ebb and flow of U.S. law enforcement, the ebb and flow of U.S. Mm. public opinion. Uh, they spend a lot of time watching that. I mean, right? They're operating as a business would. And so in part, what's, what, what you're seeing with that is, is El Chapo's family basically saying, you know, the increased attention towards fentanyl is screwing up our other narcotics trafficking operations, right? It's bringing in additional unwanted attention and to some degree, uh, law enforcement resources. And so, you know, it's, it's a bit of a PR exercise on their part, but there's, there's so there's two parts of that, but it, it's, it's not like the uh, El Chapo's gang is getting out of, out of the narcotics business. No, It'd be like Coca-Cola being like, you know what? No more Coca. Yeah. We're done with Coca-Cola. We're, we're just, it's, 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 it's time. It'll be, the obesity epidemic is a big problem. We're gonna stop with that. Um, yeah, sure. What is the CIA's- That worked out so well. Yeah. Yeah. What's the CIA's role in in understanding what's happening at the border and then before, like as things are brewing down in Venezuela and Colombia and everything else and people are coming up and through, up, you know, the Darien Gap and up through Mexico. What's the CIA's role now? Yeah. And by the way, Eric Adams, the mayor of New York, is making his way towards the Darien Gap uh, to, to to talk with the immigrants. Um, and explain that New York is is not the place to be. <laughs> so if you wanted to think that this could get any more bizarre, a Democrat uh, mayor of a the major U.S. city going down to try to stop the flow of migrants by saying, hey, you know, we're stretched in on resources. You know, I don't know whether he's going to try to convince him that San Francisco is a better spot. But uh, look, the, the, the role of, of the CIA is... Uh, as it always is uh, on national security concerns. It's a provision of intelligence and, and liaison with our partners. So primarily, what are we talking about here? We're talking about DEA, CPB, um, and, and you know state and, and federal officials who can utilize the intelligence that the agency gathers uh, on uh, cartel operations, 
uh, on the potential uh, complicity of of uh, individuals within militaries and law enforcement down you know below our southern border uh, in in uh, I hate to say that you know there occasionally could be some complicit uh, actions by the part of law enforcement in other countries, uh, but that's that's the role essentially right I mean you know it's it's we have a counter narcotics center uh, much like we have a counter terrorism center um, and you know we have worked against the narcotics problem for decades. And, you know, it's uh, it's always been a heavy lift, uh, in part because U.S. policies, you know, shift and change. Priorities change. Our focus, you know, adjusts. Sometimes it seems as if the U.S., you know, no matter who's in the White House, you can't do more than one thing at a time. So multitasking becomes a problem. I've, I've gone back and forth with the war on drugs and what to do about it and what to think about it. But at this point, with... The chemicals coming from Wuhan, China, going to Mexico, up through the border, and poisoning America. I think it was it was it Ross Pro? Someone a while back was like, "Oh, this is this is a this is just a chemical warfare against the American people." It's like like a leading cause of death amongst people of certain demographics. Like this is crazy what we're allowing here, and I think it's worthy of a war. What do you say to that? And then also, what's the threat to our country that you see at the southern border as a former CIA agent? Well, I think that the I'll, I'll flip those and, and answer the last one first. But if uh, you know from the thirty thousand foot level, the biggest threat we've got is if you don't have secure borders, right? If you don't if you don't control your borders, you know, and this has been said many many times, and you know, you're not really a nation, right? You're you know it, it, because every other nation out there, and trust me, I've lived all over hell and back, right? I've been I I spent my entire adult life and most of my childhood overseas, and every nation protects its borders, secures its borders, right? I mean, try to try to go illegally into Mexico and live there and get a work permit and health benefits illegally. It's not going to happen, right? But the US uh, tends to be the only country out there that apologizes or feels angsty about you know the secure border concept, right? Because somehow the Democrats have convinced everybody that if you want to secure the border, um, and understand who's crossing that border coming into your country, then you must be racist or anti-immigrant, and and that's just a load of crap. So you know we this is this is a, a, a top line national security concern, and if we don't get it right, right, you, and you can secure the borders and have immigration reform, you can do both of those things. I mean, I don't I don't think our current politicians can do those two things because they're so dysfunctional, but. You know, you can actually multitask and do those things. Where there's a will, we don't right now. Mike Baker, we do. host of the President's Daily Brief podcast. Of course, check it out, former state officer. Mike, wonderful to meet you, sir. Appreciate you. Keep up the great work. Uh, of course. Thank you, man. I appreciate your opportunity. Thanks.